What is up, Comics Nation? It is your boy, Aaron Jordan, with um, a new show that I've been working on called Through the Ages. It's where we take comic books from the past, present, and future and bring them to you in an enjoyable fashion. Well, today, I have a really special guest um, um, on the show tonight. Um, I've been looking at his stuff for a while. It's pretty cool, do pretty dope. He also does um, Werewolf Comics. So without further ado, let's bring him on. It's, um, Dwayne, hey. yeah, why don't you introduce yourself, man? How you been? Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Dwayne Robinson, Jr. I am the owner of Animation Comics and Entertainment LLC, or ACE for short. I also have uh, one horror comic available that will be also coming out for Indiegogo this week called Nightfall, Michael's Awakening, Issues 1 and 2. Nice, nice. Okay. So, first off, thank you for being on the stream, man. I appreciate it. No first problem. episode was always a big one. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's good. You know, it feels good to uh, be able to, to, to bust that cherry for you. You know what I mean? Be the first one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. All right. So, um, first off... Um, Tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, how did you get into comics, man? Uh, comics always was always a kind of a, something that I kind of always knew about, but did you know uh, didn't really dabble into it too much. You know, knew, just knew about it from television, cartoons, things like that. Um, I kind of grew up through it that medium while watching cartoons and stuff. Never really sat back and watched uh, or read uh, any comics. You know what I mean? Sure. But. Uh, Art wise was something I always used to always do in my spare time, just drawing some characters that I seen on television. And, uh, you know, slowly as I got older, I started to really kind of go into the stories and kind of swayed more towards the DC fandom, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and then I slowly kind of just expanded from there and even, you know, dabbled in even manga at, from time to time too. So now, you know, I'm kind of like in it now because of that. So, uh, yeah, that's how I kind of really started. And then uh, I had a friend pass away who really helped me uh, perfect my artwork and, and really showed me how to be detailed oriented with my stuff. And, and I kind of just grew from that, does those teachings. And that's that's where I'm at now, man. Hello, my brother. You know, my brother, he also, uh, he's not my flesh and blood brother, but he is someone I grew up with. And uh, he's always been more of the comic book guy. So that's kind of where the name kind of comes from, is that I'm more of the animated guy because I grew up watching animated cartoons and things. And my brother, he was more of the comic book guy. And then, you know, the entertainment aspect is because, you know, uh, our company, we do things outside of just those two things. Like we also do comic book reviews and movie reviews. And, you know, we do forums and blogs and things like that. So that's like the entertainment aspect. Also, also, we also have some other cool things that we coming up with too, like music and things. But oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. We have to talk about that later. Yeah, yeah. You know that there's a that there's a definitely for that too. You know, um, for me being a writer and, and an artist, you know, uh, the writing aspect doesn't really end with um, being able to to create stories. You know, for me, I've been always a fan of just writing poems and songs for a long time. Um, so that's kind of where the entertainment aspect when it comes to the music, that's one of the things that I'm going to be trying to work on a little bit more as I get a little bit more freedom with uh, outside of doing the comics that we've been working on for so long to get out there. You know, when I have a little bit more time, then you'll start to see more stuff. You might see a single sprinkle, you know, in the next couple of years. So look out for that. OK, I feel that, man. OK, so uh, there's pretty interesting. like. I, I can relate a little bit. For me, um, I've always been a fan. Like, I haven't really been reading comics like that. I just started getting serious with it, um, I'd say, like, five years ago. But I was always a huge fan of the Raimi Spider-Man comics. Mm -hmm. And I mean, the Raimi Spider-Man movies and um, the old Spider-Man um, reprints from um, Amazing Fantasy and onward. So that's kind of how I got into mine. And... I don't know. Like, I, I'm sure you can relate. We all used to watch the Justice League cartoon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the Justice League. Uh, I'm probably a little older than you, but um, I used to watch the Fox shows as well. 
you know, the whole Fox lineup when they had uh, the Spider-Man, the, the uh, X-Men. Oh, oh the, no, I watched all the Spider-Man ones, man. <laughs> yeah, I was there. I watched all of them, man. You know, I used to watch it from morning to it, came, it ended and then they showed the match. TV show at the end, and then that's when you knew it was time to cut it off and go to the next channel. <laughs> that was always my thing, you know. Uh, Saturday morning cartoons, that was something I left for, you know. Uh, so yeah, that's how that was kind of me. I feel that okay. Let me ask you a question What was your favorite series out of them? Oh man, you know, that <laughs> I, it's you hard, know, man. I would, I would say it's a toss up between uh, X Men and Batman animated series. Because those are those two series that, you know, they tackle so much. You know, X-Men tackled a lot, you know, for me, it was more of uh, understanding because, you know, X-Men, the, the, the whole background behind it is more about race and, you know, being able to understand and, and, and be one with each other and not really care about what they look like, you know what I'm saying? So that was always a, a real strong and understanding point for me that I understood was like, yeah, I get that. And, you know, the characters, there were so many characters with so many different powers and abilities, you know, and they were interesting. You felt for them. People died in the comic. Yeah. You know, in, the, in the animated series, you know. So, I don't know. It, it, but same thing with Batman. You know, those characters, they dealt with a lot of adult themes, too. You know, a lot. Uh, shoot, I didn't even get, uh, add Gargoyles in there, too. Gargoyles was another one where you, you could look at that show and even now be like, wow. That was yeah, really good for the back back then. Like, yeah, I'm I'm surprised Disney Disney made it back then. <laughs> yeah, you know, like the, it, it was uh such a such a really adult themed show. You know, it was uh way ahead of its time. It really was. You know, I've been hearing rumblings for years that they're gonna do like a live action or they're gonna try to bring it back or something, but nothing's coming. I just hope if that does happen that they don't they do it justice and it's not like a watered down version of it. You know what I mean? Oh oh yeah, they are making one, aren't they? Yeah, I've heard that uh, uh, Jordan Peele was trying to get something together with that. Um, but I've been hearing okay. that for a couple of years now. I haven't seen anything, so, you know, I don't know. Yeah. Well, we'll see how it goes. Um, quick. Um, hey, what's going on, Dragon Multimedia? Belmont, thank you for making it to the stream. What's going on, man? How you doing? Okay. So, now that we talked about your origin story, Okay. <laughs> Word on the street is you have a new project coming up. Yeah, I have a new crowdfunding uh, Indiegogo coming out this week. Um, Night for Nightfall, Michael's Awakening, Issues 1 and 2. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, it's something I'm really excited about because we were uh, recently on uh, Kickstarter and we were successful there. But as you know, you know, there's uh, two different mediums for both. And, you know, you have to be able to... Uh, give love to both and that's what we want to do you know so we're going now to indiegogo and uh showing some love there and uh hopefully everybody will show love back and be excited about the perks that we have available uh we have we're going to really double our stretch goals with what we have so uh i'm excited about that as well the stretch goals is going to be really cool one of my favorite perks or rewards is that uh you know i'm actually going to actually draw you uh alongside either either side of uh team you want to be called with you know if you want to be team michael which is quote unquote the good side of good guys then i'll draw you alongside team michael but if you are a bad guy you know i will also draw you alongside uh team lucius and his uh his bad you know okay. so that's one of my favorite uh perks that are always available it's a little bit more it's a little pricey but it's definitely worth it uh my friend lewis uh aka shadow rabbit He's uh, one person that I actually uh, was able to draw, and I was posting it not too long ago. Okay. I really liked it. All right. Uh, um, Dragon Multimedia says, I bought Night I bought Nightfall 1 via a convention. I met Ace at, and it's great. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. That's what's up. That's great to hear. That's great to hear. You know, I mean, uh, I'm more of a face guy, so if, if I if I saw his picture, I would definitely recognize him. Um, but yeah, you know, it's always great to to run into people and uh, hear hear their their responses for the comic. You know, whether they uh, tell me on my website, you know, 
telling me in the blog section saying how they enjoyed the story or just a comment from Facebook or Instagram, wherever. It's always a, a very gratifying feeling to, to, to be uh, heard and, and people saying that they love your story, you know what I mean? It makes you feel like all that hard work was really worth it. Exactly, man. Dude, that's like always the best feeling. Like I remember one time um, someone said, um, like uh, uh, even getting reviews, it's like, dang, people really think of this of, of my work. Yeah, you know, because reviews is is a little bit more uh, strategic, you know, because they know what to look for, they know what's bad, what's good. So exactly. when you go to a company or, or or you know website that are you know famous for giving you the real reviews, and then they give you give them their stuff. And then they're like, wow, this is actually still good. And you're like, wow, really? That, that means a lot because you guys, are, you know, you're real. You tell me if it's yeah. good or it's bad. And they're telling me that it's good. That means I must have something here. So, you know, that's also a very gratifying feeling, too, to have someone that is uh, really, like, hard on the comics and really know what to look for and then tell you that your story is still good. That's a great feeling. It is. All right. What do you say we break into this campaign show the audience a little bit of what's going on yeah we you know we have the pre launch page right now because it's not available but yeah we have a lot of good things that's on there we have uh the few pictures that are uploaded that is from the actual uh issue one we also yeah. have our um comic wellspring actually was gracious enough to uh put us in our spotlight their spotlight so i put up the spotlight video but here we see uh, T. Michael along with uh, his uh, family. Uh, from left to right, top, we got uh, the woman with the sword is his uh, mysterious aunt, uh, Vivian Vash, who is introduced in issue two. We have his uh, sister, who's on the top right, who is Vivian Carter, who's not his flesh and blood sister, but she is someone that he grew up with since birth. So they kind of see each other as brother and sister. Um, they have a very close relationship as such. Then uh, bottom left with the two swords there, looking real serious, is actually his mother, uh, Diana Vass, who actually is uh, a very important character in issue one because Diana, when she first came into the, the town that they live into, there was a lot of unexplained and mysterious events that had happened. And because of that, the townspeople had dealt his mom the town crazy one. So wow. he always had to have to live with that as a young kid. And, you know, as he got older, you know, people started to really kind of talk to him and still give him the opportunity to be friends with him, even though a lot of people knew about his mother and all the crazy things that happened. You find out some of the things that happened in issue one, you know, we kind of really wanted to, uh, give you a little bit of a back uh, story on her and uh, some of the things that she kind of went through that made it kind of hard on Michael when he was growing up. But uh, yeah. as he got older, you know, he, he became more athletic and he actually is a, a college quarterback. Um, okay. So one of, the, one of the cool things about issue one is that, you know, I really wanted to uh, throw in a lot of cool Easter eggs. So one of the Easter eggs that I wanted to throw in was talk a little bit about me and my personality and things that I like. So the name of Michael, his full name is Michael Bash. So if, if anybody out there that's listening or you know you right now, uh, Aaron, is, you know, you might be an anime fan. For those I was thinking. Are, you know, there's a real popular anime uh, that has the name Bash in it. And uh, <laughs> the anime is called Trigon. And in Trigun, the main character, his name is Vash to Stampede. So his football college team that he is a part of, they're actually called the Stampede. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that was a small little Easter egg that I threw in. There's a few others. I don't want to ruin it, you know, so I'll leave it at that. But if you go up, you can actually see the little spotlight video there. Okay. Uh, let's dig.
<laughs> and there you have it. <laughs> nice. You know, okay, that's um, pretty lit. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, I was really hyped this set. They uh, chose me to put them on the spotlight. I thought that was so cool. I really did appreciate that. Comic Wellspring is actually the company that I will be using um, for my printing. I, I do. I use them for all of our printing, whether it be our comics, our posters, uh, so much other things that we use them for. So, you know, that we're going to be using them again. Um, so shout out to Comic Wellspring. Thank you for the spotlight video. Uh, it came out so good, you know, and I, I couldn't thank them enough for it. But yeah, that's that pretty much gives you like pretty much a backdrop for what exactly the story is about. You know, the story truly is about in issue one is about, you know, he's a normal college quarterback. You know, like I said, he went through so many things, but doesn't really talk too much about that but the main story is about he's a, a normal college quarterback that finds out from his mother that he has a legacy line of werewolves within him and yeah. as i said it's up to him to believe that what she's saying is true or not because of all of those unexplained events you know in the back of his head he always kind of felt that his mom might be actually crazy so when she tells him the truth about what lies within him he is very conflicted and you find out what happens at the end of the issue if he believes it or not, or if his life will be changed, or is it all in her head? Okay, that's that was just um, that was just what I was gonna ask you too. Is <laughs> I was gonna be like, oh, since um, the the thing with werewolf stories is like one of the coolest things um, the experience is the transformation. So I was gonna ask, how does all that play into it? And you answered it perfectly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, you know. Uh, well, it, I guess you can, you know, in issue two, uh, the, well, oh, I should go tell you that the, the the main thing that was really cool about issue one, though, is that, um, <laughs> thank you, I appreciate that, man, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Uh, but yeah, like I was going to say, one of the, the cool things about issue one is that, um, as you saw in the video, a lot of the, the panels uh, was in black and white. If you scroll yeah. down, you'll see some of the, the pages as well that is actually in black and white. Um, yeah. Because uh, that's how the story starts out. It actually starts out in black and white, and then it slowly goes into color later into the series. Uh, the reason behind that is uh, you got to read the comic to find out. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that was one thing that I really kind of wanted to do something kind of cool and unique. Um, but also have it not just to be cool and unique, but actually have to tie in within the story. And uh, yeah. that that's like a main feature that's in issue one. And issue two is full color and it goes on from there. Um, but transformation uh, wise, I wanted to do something a little different because I'm a fan of the very first Wolfman series or Same. movie that came out way, way back before I was even born which is also in black and white, which is another reason why I did decided to start the story in black and white to pay homage to all the classic movies like that. Um, <clears throat> but uh, transformation, there's two different levels of how you can trans transform. Uh, there's uh, for those who are quote unquote half bleed, half breeds, which are people that don't have a legacy line because there's like a tier basically. So yeah. there's like people that have legacy line that are the top tier. That people that are legacy line, that's like full blood like it. They can turn at any time. They can, uh, they, they don't have resistance to uh, metal or silver or anything. They're just, okay. they're just OP, basically. Just so that's pretty much, um, it's a side effect from um, diluting the bloodline, pretty much. Oh, for half breeds. Yeah, I guess yeah. you could say that. Yeah, I don't think so. If you're a half breed, you can either be a half breed by being turned by a, a person that is uh, a, has a legacy line, so you're still not full blooded, but you can still turn, but you can only turn during the night or during a full moon. Half breed. Uh, also, half breed can also be turned by another half breed, but they can never be a legacy line uh, like. And so their their transformations are more un uncontrolled, like they're more vicious when they first turn. But if you have a legacy line, you're instantly in control of your body. 
like you, you so if you turn right now you just be like oh i'm a werewolf but i'm not like you know ah, I'm going crazy i have like total control of my body i just am in this this new form of of being but the actual thing about a legacy line is that that is your true form your okay. true form is that but when you turn you don't always go full fledged to your you know the werewolf or lichen form you turn into a wolfman firm oh, so sure. the wolfman firm is like a way for you to understand what you are and then level up to the next part each time you level up but when you get to your final form is you have to go through something emotionally it can be something happy it can be something sad it can be mad whatever but you have to go through it but also control it because it all their true form is all based on that just emotion and but being controlled so that's what happens to um michael in issue two he's trying to learn how to tap into that because he hasn't got it yet and so they're doing so much training. So in issue two, that's kind of what Michael is trying to get used to. He's also trying to learn more about what it is to be a person that has a legacy line, learn more about the truth about his family. And then he gets introduced to a whole new family member <laughs> during the series of issue two. So then he's trying to learn more about her and who is Vivian Vash and where she stands in, in the totem pole of the world that he's like trying to understand. Yeah. The cool thing about Vivian is that Vivian is by far the strongest character in the whole story. No one's oh, really? Angel. She's uh she, but she's a special uh, form of a liking because Vivian, if you go to her eyes, if you go back up to where you can see a good picture of, of Vivian. No problem. Um, with the sword there. If you look into her eyes, her eyes are like yellowish, as you can see it. Um, the reason why her eyes are that color is because she, it, when she like when she turned, she actually had this really really special way of turning. There's only a certain select few that had this ability, and basically what happens is when you turn into your true form, that's your true form, but there's a certain type of select ones that when they turn, they turn, they inward. So basically, mm -hmm. instead of her turning into like a big, you know, lichen or werewolf, she stays into her human form, but she keeps all of her faculties and her abilities that she would have in her werewolf form. That's why okay. her eyes doesn't change color. Like everybody else's, you can see their eyes are still normal color. Even Michael's mom, her eyes turn blue when she turns. But okay, you know, hers is gold. Okay, so it's sort of like, and I'm gonna um, reference Dragon Ball real quick. So it's sort of like when Goku learned how to take all the God Key and just fuse into his base. Right. Yeah. Something similar okay. to that. Okay. So she sees that OP that she still has all of her abilities in her human form, but because she can keep her human form and keep all of her strength, it actually strengthens her lichen form. So when she ever has to really turn back into her lichen form, her lichen form will be 10 times as strong as anybody else's lichen form. I so. Know. That's one cool thing about being a, having a legacy line is that everybody they can with, th with you know keep their strength as their uh, liking form, but if they decide to like go into a battle and they don't turn, but they kill someone with their liking form as a human, it doubles their strength. Cool. So. There's a lot of things within in the uh, <laughs> I just like gave away like a lot that's an issue for, but that's cool. You know, it, it's all good. Uh, it gives more anticipation for the next series that's coming up or next issues that's coming up. But, okay. Yeah, you know, uh, as you can see there in that page there, that's uh, when it slowly starts to go into color. Um, and that was something like I said that was something that I really kind of wanted to do. I really wanted to show. Uh, a cool little homage to uh, my favorite uh, old school uh, Wolfman movie, along with uh, also being a, a huge fan of just black and white myself. You know, that's my personal uh, feeling behind it. 
I feel that. Wizard of Oz. Yeah, you know, you're not the first one to say that, actually. You know, um, someone else said that too, that they were they reminded them of uh, the Wizard of Oz. Um, funny thing is, though, is that I didn't really um, see the Wizard of Oz movie uh, until I got like way older. I think I was like in my 20s when I first saw it. So I didn't know anything about that. Like when people were saying, I was like, oh, really? I had to go back and watch and go, oh, yeah, it was in black and white, wasn't it? So, yeah, that really wasn't uh, the reason behind it. I didn't even know that. But, yeah, you know, that's also a, a cool way of thinking about yeah. it, it's comparing it to that. No, but I, I can relate. Like, with The Wizard of Oz, like, we've all um, – have you ever seen The Wiz? That's yeah, of course. That's all. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what I knew. <laughs> I knew the Wiz. I didn't know. <laughs> yeah. So when someone told me that, I was like, "Oh yeah!" And I had to go back and look at it. And I was looking at it. I was like, "Holy oh, shoot! It wasn't black and white. I don't even remember that. I just remember the Wiz. You know what I mean? Like I still grew up to that. You know what I'm saying? Oh, exactly. So like that was that's how what I grew up with. But it was cool to actually see that. And and, and uh, there's actually another. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. comic book creator that I know his name is Lewis um, I can't remember his last name but he has a, a story as well where his story starts out in black and white and it goes into color later into the series I, I forget the reason behind it but um, yeah he's also had that idea too so you know it's good to know that you know it, the others kind of had that same wavelength it might be a different way or reason behind it but you know people still kind of use that kind of trope I guess you know to put it exactly. there. I feel that. Okay, so we talked about the heroes. They're looking pretty dope so far. <laughs> well, can you tell us anything about the villains in your story? What's going on with them? Yeah, so the villains in the story is actually uh, ones that don't really get introduced until issue two. Um, because the, the villain in the story is actually, his name is Lucius Vash. He's actually the grandfather of Michael and the mother of Diana and Victoria. He's this, what? He's this guy. Yeah. Can you see it? Oh, yeah. There we go. So he's that guy. And then you have his other two big bads there. We have his uh, adopted, his adopted grandson, Lucien. And then we have his uh, second in control, uh, Dakin. Okay. So, yeah, so, um, but Lucian, Lucian is a, a, a villain that, you know, is a very, very calculating person. He's actually uh, the ruler of the actual real world because the whole story of Nightfall is that um, centuries and centuries before Michael was born and Lucian was a young, young boy, um, they decided that because humans were starting to get positions of power in the world, that they would find out that they really resided of werewolves and witches and um, vampires who still kind of were around in that world, but were kind of going extinct. Um, so they decided that they needed to protect themselves and they didn't really want to go into war with them because they still saw humans as people that they can manipulate and use either for food or whatever. So they didn't want to yeah. just, you know, oh, we're just going to kill them and that's it. So what they decided to do was they had a meeting with uh, powerful witches and uh, the witches created this uh, spell over the whole world where it would basically erase that idea of witches, werewolves, of old, as actually being real. Mm -hmm. The only way if you can actually see if a person is actually a werewolf or a witch is if they would either one, show you their form, or two, they have to be born within it. So like okay. Michael, Michael was kind of into that world of believing that they didn't exist. But because he is of, has a legacy line, he was able to actually see his true form of his mom and be able to turn after his birthday. Okay. Uh, so others, others like he, like his, his sister 
he finds out where she actually is later in the series too. And you actually see how powerful she truly is as well. Um, so there's a lot of shocks and, you know, shock surprises that, that happen within issue one at the end of issue one. And it kind of goes more into depth of who those characters are in issue two. Um, in issue three, it basically goes, continues right after that. And that's kind of one thing that I really wanted to do with the series is that, you know, it ends and it just picks up right where it ends and it just goes on from there and keeps going and goes on and stops, continues on and keeps going from there. So, you know, it's like, you don't miss anything. It's not like this story where it's like 10 years from now or 10 years later or a year later. Nope, just no, same time. That. So, you know, it just keeps it uh, really kind of just going, you know, gut wrenching and heart pacing and all that good stuff. Okay, all right. Um, for so for your book, are you do are you planning on doing like um, multiple arcs, or is it like one cohesive story? No, uh, that's one cool thing that at first I was thinking about just doing one just long story. But as the more time went on and I started to really create more of the world and, and getting ideas of what I could add, I decided that I'm going to do two more arcs. Hmm. Originally, I was going to do a prequel to explain how and why Michael's mom decided to go to this town, how she got there, why she was there, what happened with all of these events that transpired, um, like why is his aunt not automatically with them, where did she go, who's uh, his sister, all of these things, you know? So that's what the prequel, what uh, actually another important thing in the prequel is that we also see the kind of uh, rise and fall of Lucian Vash and how he actually ends up becoming the villain because in the beginning of the, st of the prequel, he's more of like a, a, a hero and you kind of see his kind of fall from grace uh so that's what the prequel is but then afterwards it goes back into the future or present to future where it talks about the birth of michael's daughter hope uh, and uh yeah, the goes, now. yeah it's, it's a little thought out it's got it's got it's got a little bit of a long way to go mm -hmm. so uh you know uh even though we do have so many other future stories you know um we have our uh Brook City story, which is our over the top comedy. Um, the best way I could always describe Brook City is uh, if Family Guy and the Boondocks had like a love child, that would be what uh, Brook City would be. You know, it's just a, a good mashup of just really over the top craziness and uh, just a good time, you know. And then we have the Immortal story, which is about uh, a man who develops the ability to become immortal after being the savior of an alien invasion. And it really dives into uh, basically what exactly, oh, there you go. You yeah, scroll down, down, scroll down, scroll down. There you uh, go, there's a mortal there. Uh, it basically um, asks the question, what is the negative to actually being immortal? A lot of people might think, oh man, I can live forever. I can see the world change. What would be the negatives to that? And um, that's what that story really kind of talks about. Um, I'm also forgetting our other story that is available. We're gonna be doing a Kickstarter for that um, next year, early next year, which is our Salvation title. Um, Salvation is basically about the main character. His name is Vaughn. He is in what you call in his world a relic, which basically means he is a person that has um, demon blood and human blood within him. That's why his eyes are two different colors. And he's in search of a powerful shaman um, that you see actually on the right that he meets in issue one that can probably give him more information on his curse mark that was given to him at birth because he feels that it's actually a curse mark because of the fact that humans hate him because they know that he has this relic blood, this demon blood within him. And then the demons are always trying to try to kill him, but he believes because they want to try to possess his abilities and take over hell, but he doesn't know for sure. And he's hoping that this powerful shaman could tell him the real reason behind his curse mark. And that's what that journey starts off with. 
because it's it's a wild story to say the least. My brother Terrence Young is the creator. I am the artist, and then my my uh, teammate John Cruz is the colorist. Okay, yeah. okay. I'm gonna start off by saying this actually looks pretty dope. Um, oh, what's this? Oh, I can zoom in. Nice. So let me <laughs> let me see. Close to the details. So those two on the left are the villains that of that issue um, that he, he actually tackles, and they definitely give him a run for the money. Um, my brother, he actually really went in depth with it comes to uh, positions in like demonology and things like that. So a lot of the characters, names, and things like that, he kind of really like did his 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 uh, history and on and so. Nice. Try to keep it a little more realistic to that, but so those two right there are actually what you call presidents of hell, and they're that's like uh almost like top tier, like top three tiers. So they're very strong, and they definitely, as I said, they definitely give Vaughn a run for his money. And uh, issue one and issue zero, which is the one with him in the face, it's basically an introduction to the character, to the world. Um, it tries to show you what happens on his day to day and how hard it is that his life has been. A lot of people, when they see this, they think of berserk and things like that because of yeah. uh, the 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 armor and the curse mark. You know, even though the curse mark and berserk is on his neck and not on his arm, but you know, it's always cool to have a nice little comparison to have people understand what the story might be about, even though it's way different. But hey. I take it. No, I feel that. All right. So, <laughs> so <laughs> you got Salvation coming up. You got um, that's coming out right now. You already did the um, Indiegogo or Kickstarter for that, correct? Yes. Uh, Salvation is already available now. We still have a few comics available. Um, but yeah, that's gonna be our next Kickstarter so we can get more printing for Salvation, issues zero and one. So that's coming out early next year. Uh, Nightfall will be available to Indiegogo next week. Uh, most likely uh, Monday or Tuesday. Um, just waiting for the thing to give me the okay to, to launch. And so, yeah. Okay. And we have all the future prizes coming up as well. The Brook City, the Nightfall, I mean, the Brook City and Immortal. And then we have uh, Ichi Warrior of Doom there, which ooh, came in right at the, right the perfect time. Dude, uh, the Man of Miracles. Right? <laughs> Ichi Warrior of Doom is written by my brother. Uh, this is also a very, very dark story. Um, it's basically about the rise and fall of, well, actually, no, it's not a rise and fall. It's basically about the antagonism, like antagonist. Uh, basically a person that is the villain, not the, the hero. Protagonist would be the hero, antagonist would be the villain. Um, so it's basically about that. And But he's, he's a character where you kind of like still root for him, even though he is the villain. And you kind of respect all the decisions and the way how he goes about doing things. But he's, he's, a, he's a very ruthless person. And so much so that he's he's almost like toxic or like a walking plague. And um, people that are around him actually slowly, you know, start to get more evil as the more the closer they are to him. And that's why you see in the cover, his wife who's standing next to him, as you can see her, hand, her arm, it looks like she's slowly decaying. Oh, shoot. Yeah, if you can see it i don't know if so it's sort of like uh izanami he's what izanami um it's pretty much the japanese goddess of um the dead oh okay yeah um not no, necessarily, I, mean, I mean not necessarily i would say it's 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 more of a, a visual example of oh, no, i understand that i was just saying uh because in her lore, she looks like a decaying corpse or something like that. Right, because that's yeah. kind of what his life he is. He's like a walking plague because anybody around him, basically, they slowly get to turn and become more evil because of him being around him. 
So he's definitely, he's like I said, he's definitely a, a character that is very different from all of our other stories because most of our, all, all of our other stories, you know, it dives into the hero in some form of fashion, you know, all the characters are really heroes. This one is really about the villain and uh, it takes you to a very, very dark, dark world. The best way I could describe the story in, in some form or fashion to give people a better understanding of it, it's like uh, Macbeth, if you're oh, okay. familiar with uh, Shakespeare. Yeah. Um, that's 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 kind of that story is kind of similar to it in that, that type of form. All right, so there's no, there's technically no hero per se. It's just you're going through his story and you're getting his perspective. Right, you, you basically, it starts out right from the beginning and it gives you a little bit of an explanation on how he was from a kid showing you that he was always this kind of calculating an evil person. And, and his uh, father was the one that kind of kept, kept it contained. But in the beginning of the story, we see that his father is actually about to be uh, killed. And basically when his father is killed, it opens up those floodgates of all those evil thoughts, all of those evil desires to come out. And now it's based on trying to get revenge. So it's even amplified because of that, because um, his father was uh, accused for something that he didn't do. And Ichi feels that, you know, because he was framed, he, he wants to get revenge on the emperor. And the best way to get revenge is to kill him and be emperor himself. Because it's set in feudal Japan as well. That's why you see the armor that he has on looks like it's from feudal Japan, because it is. Um, so a, a lot of times when, we, when I do coverage, you know, I always want to try to give you a little bit of the story of the what's going on or what might be happening in the future or in present in the issue. So in this one is, as I said, with his wife, um, with her hand being, you know, her body to gain. There's also the three tombstones there. The two tombstones is his mother and his father. The third tombstone is their unborn child that died. Oh, so those are the two things that kind of like, you know, propel him to really still be this evil person. And then you have all of these dead bodies that help him rise to being the emperor of Japan because of so much killing that he's done. He uses them as stepping stones. So you're having him getting rid of babies. <laughs> <laughs> nah. <laughs> Sorry, I had to make a little joke there. So, but yeah, yeah, dude. Okay, so with Brook City, you mentioned that um, you took a lot of um, your likeness and your, um, your brother's likeness in it. Yeah. Can you tell us more of that? And also, uh, who's this guy? I'm kind of interested in him. <laughs> so, okay. So, uh, left to right, you have uh, Showtime, uh, who's the character is based on me, my likeness, my face. And then we have on the right side uh, is my brother, who, again, I drew his likeness for, for character's inspiration. But his name is Tate Diggs in the, in the story. The character in the middle is... Uh, the, their kind of character that they kind of run into because, you know, they're just having a normal day in, ish, in the first couple issues, I mean, panels or pages, and they run into this character, this mysterious uh, entity. He looks like a ghost, but he's not necessarily a ghost because he can transform his body into any any type of matter, any type of whatever his, his brain can come up with. And so they didn't know what to call him and because he kind of looked like a ghost, they decided to call him Yo G, and he okay. had like a little swagger to him, you know. So they th he threw on he has he's walking around with these glasses, so he was like, yeah, you know, he got a little swag, so we just call him Yo G, and so that's what he is. He's just Yo G. He can transform into anything. Um, he can literally transform into anything. In the first couple pages, he actually. Uh, transforms into something similar to like a Megazord from Power Rangers. Oh yeah, yeah. He transforms into a car. He transforms into um, uh, weapons. He he's uh, anything that they need to uh, get past the 
craziness that they're going through at the time. You know, there's a lot of uh, different chapters that's in the story. Each chapter is a, is a different story. And uh, in the first chapter, it's more like the introduction to all of the characters, but they uh, end up turning into something similar to like, I guess you could say like the Power Rangers. <laughs> oh, so they got the suits and everything? <laughs> yeah, they, they, they have like these outfits that they, they uh, transform into. And it's it's just I like to not go go into too much into it. It's just really craziness that goes on. Like uh even like when they're fighting, there's like a lot of craziness that happens because you know, like I said, we really kind of wanted to to throw in a lot of pop culture references. So there's a lot of pop culture references in, in the first chapter, you know. Hmm. You said it sounds like well, I didn't see that. Uh uh says uh kind of like Seattle. Oh, no, nah, it sounds kind of, <laughs> yeah. So uh, actually the background is actually, uh, that's the Brooklyn Bridge. Um, the story, it, it's not necessarily Brooklyn itself. Uh, the story, the, the town that they're from is called Brook City. Uh, you know, we didn't want to necessarily use Brooklyn. We kind of wanted to make up our own world, but True. each world that they, or each story that they go into, it's an it's a alternate version of Brook City. So in the first uh, chapter, it's basically their normal home world, but then they get transformed into different world versions of Brook City. They go into a version that's like 2020 and how bad and how crazy it was and for us. It's like way over the top for uh, the world that they go into for uh, Brook City for 2020. Um, nice. That's another chapter. It's just a lot of craziness that goes on, but we try to keep it fun. We try to use a lot of uh, pop culture references and a lot of things that might happen, but try to make it into like a little bit of a uh, funny co comedic versions of things. You know, we have a, another version where we have uh, everybody, you know, how everything is like sold out when it comes to the consoles like Xbox uh, Series X and S, and then there's the PlayStation 5. So they have, uh, there's a chapter where um tay diggs actually is in search for a playstation 5 and he finds it but the way how we set it up we kind of make it seem like it's uh indiana jones of uh, raiders in the lost art oh. you know he's running through with the the boulder behind him okay. it's sort of like that but instead of the, the, the it's a boulder it's like a a mixture of people that's like been trying to find it and he got it so they like been run run over and we created like a, a huge ball and he's running from that ball of people, and they're like screaming, "Ah, sir, first get to me!" And he's running oh, sort of like a sort of like the Katamari game. game, huh? My bad. It was like sort of like the Katamari game, right? Yeah, yeah, like that. Sort of like that. <laughs> sort of like that. It's great. That's actually where we kind of use that idea from. Is that you know, uh, just just like I said, it's just a real crazy story, and I can't wait to finally have it done and uh we're actually i'm actually in the works of redoing the cover as we speak um i just finished uh the inks and i'm sending over the colors right now to my boy john cruz so we'll probably be uploading that within the next couple of weeks as well all right so with all these projects um when can you expect them to um what do you when do you think that you'll be finished with um at least some of them well, Salvation is coming out early next year. Um, Brook City will probably be coming out for sure uh, middle of next year. Um, Immortal and Nightfall will probably be coming around the same time. So around this time, or probably a little earlier, maybe like September, September October, we'll have both of those series uh, coming out as well. Because a lot of people have been telling me how much they enjoy um, the Nightfall series. And originally we wanted to kind of just go in and do different series. You know, we wanted to just show our creativity and um, really just make different stories. But because so many people are really excited and they really like the Nightfall series, I'm going to go back and um, do issue three. So people can still have something to it to enjoy and, and we'll have to be still reading issues one and two. You know what I mean? Okay. So this is a perfect time for everybody to, you know, get all caught up. That way when issue three comes out, you'll be ready and good to go. Nice. All right. So 
We were talking about Nightfall earlier. Um, let me um, actually get back to that. Oop. So, yeah, we were talking about Nightfall earlier. When do you think um, you'll be ready to launch the Kickstarter? I'm um, the Indiegogo. <laughs> yeah, uh, as I said, um, Monday, Monday or, or most likely Tuesday for sure uh, is when I'm just waiting for it to give us the okay to launch. Um, okay, so okay. it'll probably be probably some, uh, Monday or Tuesday. So next week. Okay, nice. We ain't gonna be waiting too long. <laughs> yeah, not yeah, not at all. You know, I, when I promote those things, I you know I try to give it at least two weeks of time to uh, give it enough time to run, like, let everybody be notified and things like that. And then by that time, we're good to go. And then hopefully we'll just get enough people to see it by a lot of time, and it can be successful. And you know, we just continue from there. Like uh, one of the cool things that they have in Indiegogo though, is that they let you actually um, keep your campaign way after it's a lot of time. That way you can uh, still get people to purchase any of the perks that you have available. So that's one of the things that we're gonna definitely do as well because we're setting our goals so low. Um, we wanna give people st still time that might see it late because so many people, after the Kickstarter was done, they were like, oh man, I didn't even know you had a Kickstarter. I, mean, I didn't see it. And it's like, you didn't see it? I'm so molding everywhere. How did you not see it? It's like, I don't know, I just didn't see it. You know, with the algorithms that the crazy as they are, you know, some people still miss it. Exactly. So this is a great way with uh, Indiegogo that, you know, people could still catch it, maybe not during when it goes live, but maybe afterwards, they'll still have time to get one of the perks. Because, uh, you know, a lot of the stuff that we do on our perks, we always try to go a little bit lower than what we would have to pay regularly if you're going through our website, like T-shirts or, or bags or anything like that. So, you know, that's a great way, reason why you would want to get any of our um, crowdfunding, whether it be Kickstarter or any GoGo, because you still get a, a really, really good, reasonable price for all of our perks and rewards. Okay. All right. So we're getting close to the time here. I there's gonna be a new thing I'm trying out. Um, I'm gonna be asking you two questions, and they can be random. But um, the questions I have are: um, How do you personally get into your um, writing or drawing process? And the second one is a little bit more fun. Pick. Two of your favorite um, characters from um, comics mediums, like um, comic books, and after you pick them, who do you think would win in a fight? <laughs> okay, so uh, to answer your first one, with me, um, man, you know, I've uh, when I first started writing or just having thoughts of creating stories. I really kind of had an idea where I would watch a movie or read a book or a comic or whatever. And if there was something in it that I thought, hey, this was good or this was bad, but this is what I would do with the story. That's how I started to like write things down. And that's how I grew from, from that just to eventually start to really just write from, from just my head and coming up with crazy ideas. I've been coming up with ideas and characters for like stories since I was young. And now that I actually have like more fuel to the fire, I guess you could say, to give me that, you know, like there's an actual reason for me to think of these stories because I can actually publish them now. I come up with stories so many, it's like, oh man. <laughs> I don't even sleep like I used to because I could be like, all right, I'm gonna go to sleep and I'm laying down and a story just pop in my head, instead of me like saying, no, go to sleep. I'm like, yeah, this is a good idea. <laughs> and I wake up and I'm like, oh man, I'm gonna write this down. And I write it down and I start getting into it. And I'm like, oh man, I gotta go to sleep. I gotta go to work. What time is it? Oh shit, it's four o'clock in the morning. What am I gonna do? You know, so <laughs> I can't tell you how many times this happened to me. But I definitely feel that, man. Yeah, man, that's a good thing though. You know, it's good to fuel that creativity. You know what I mean? Because you never know what's gonna happen in the, in the future. So use it as much as you possibly can, you know, if you have kids or, you know, you're just not able to do it as much as you could when you were younger. So, you know, definitely fuel that creativity. That's always the advice I give people when they um, ask me, you know, like, should I do it? I don't know if I'm gonna have money. It's like, just do it, just try. 
it's better to try and fail than to to not try at all and always wonder like, man, I could have did it. Why well, I, I should have did it? I didn't do it. I wasted exactly. my, my youth. I wasted my time. You know, and that's another cool thing about this indie com comic company. You know, world uh, is that you know there's no age limit to it. You know what I mean? You could be sixty and you know still make your first published comic. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to be, a, it's not a young cat's world or an old guy's world. It's a anybody's world. As long as you have the uh, idea, then there's no story that I feel, honestly, that is uh, a wrong story. You know, I feel that there's a there's a, a fan base for anything and everything. So, you know, I don't care if your story is about a, a flying tomato that becomes a superhero. <laughs> Write it, do it, publish it. There's gonna be someone out there that when you pitch it to someone in a, in a uh, convention or just walking down the street or in a comic book store and you're like, hey man, I got a story about a, a flying tomato. That's super, word, that sounds crazy. There you go. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And I'm pretty sure it won't just be that one person. It'll be, a, it's a fan base for everything. You truly have to believe that. So be fearless with your stories, you know? Um, so to answer your second question, uh, that's kind of funny because we um, for our uh, our website we we usually used to do something called Friday night fights. Oh yeah. And uh, on our Friday night fights is basically what that is. Like we would choose from diff not just uh, the comic book uh, realm, just um, from any any type of walk of life, whether it be a video games or comics, anime, you know, anything in between. We, we always put a few characters together. Uh, one of my favorites that I had done was, uh, um, man, it's been a few of them actually, now I'm thinking about it, but I did a Iceman versus Sub-Zero. Okay. That was a cool one. A lot of people went with uh, Iceman because Iceman is more of an Omega level character and Sub-Zero yeah. is just kind of Sub-Zero. I mean, some dude does have some feats, but yeah, you know, <laughs> I mean, you know, you get it. That's the that's the cool thing about it, you know, is that there's no wrong answer. You know what I mean? Like exactly. people people act like, oh yeah, I'm an aficionado of this character, but no, there's no wrong answer because it's all it all depends on whoever's doing the story. You yeah. know what I mean? Whoever if this if this was a a story that someone had to write or put into a video game or whatever it's your option sure so there's no wrong answer so that's one of the things that i love <laughs> see there you go there you go so whoever's you know what you should write the story you write the story of a flying tomato with superpowers and that could be your first introduction into being a, a published uh indie comic company or create a story and you know just take off from there man Cause I'm telling you, there's no, I, I tell people that all the time. That's like one of the most important things I try to tell people um, is that there's no, no, when it comes to your story, just, exactly. just, just do it. I mean, of course there's gotta be things that, you know, you gotta make sure that the editing is right and, and things of that nature. I mean, all, of course, you know, artwork sometimes plays a, a role as well. But I've seen stories on Kickstarter or just being in conventions. I saw a story with a, a talking shark that had um, like rockets attached to its sides. Wait, what? Yeah, that was the story. It was a, it was a, a, a shark that got uh, some scientists, you know, and you know, did some kind of test to him, and he was able to talk, and he could talk. And he has rockets implanted on his sides. And that's what the story is about. King Shark, eat your heart out. <laughs> right? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and it's crazy because I've seen it. I seen this guy put his stuff on Kickstarter, and it's so crazy and over the top. And you're just like, this is this is silly. But he always gets his his uh his his goal. He always get, makes his goal. He has T-shirts now, and he has a huge fan base. So nice. there's, there's, there should never be like a like. Nah, I don't think so. Anybody would want to hear this story? I tell people, no, do it. Just do it. Doesn't matter, dude. Honestly, I think that's the problem with um, some mainstream companies. It's like the the stories are good. Um, well, 
I, I think they were good back then, but yeah. that's besides the point. It's um, there's like a such a high um barrier that they um um expect you to get past, and I I don't know, I don't like the way that it's like there's so much um there's so much that you have to do to be able to get in there that you can't prove your shot. Yeah, that's true too. You know, for me, like I feel that, uh, in my opinion, I just feel like there's no creativity in mainstream right now. There oh, is. Yeah. There, I feel like it's just so, like they, because they don't know where to go with anything. They just like, oh, let's just stick to what works instead of trying something new and yeah. backing that. You know, and it, and it's crazy because a lot of people. They'll follow that and then they'll complain about how they're sick of seeing the same stuff. Like I seen this recently in one of the uh, Facebook groups, there was a guy, he was saying, you know, what if uh, there was more stories like Black Panther and, and Blade? And he's just naming all these, you know, Black characters that aren't Black owned or created. But, uh, you know, just, and he's like, man, what if we had more of these? And I was like, well, you know, in the indie comic world, there's, there's, Tons of stories that are way better than Blade, way better than yes. Black Panther, way better than any of these stories. It's like you just have to do your your research and look for them, and just get into that world, and you'll see how many cool stories there are in the world. Because I'll put a lot of you know a lot of these stories that I've seen in the in, in comic world that are way better than uh, any mainstream stories that you know I put them up against anything, mine's yeah. included, yours included, you know like. All of our stories, I mean, when, when we read them and people see them, they're like, man, I love this. Me personally, I've read a lot of people's uh, indie comics and I can look at it and go, man, this is better. This is better than Blade. I would read this. I would watch this in the movies. You know, we just yeah. don't have a lot of large backing as because that's what mainstream is all about. You know what I mean? But imagine if we had all of those people that say those things and they actually do find our stuff. We would be the mainstream, but exactly. we would put the mainstream in such a better form that because there's so many different avenues of stories being told in all different forms and all different walks of life, whether you're a black person, white person, person of color, you know, brown person, whatever, all the above. And we all come up with these cool, unique stories that far exceed all of the mainstream. But a lot of people don't really want to look for it. They just want it to be right in your face. Exactly. And that's where the, you know, the division and the divide comes through because we can't just throw it in your face. If you don't go to a convention or you don't go to a comic book store or you're not, you know, looking at what's cool in in, in black comic creators, you know, you'll never know. Exactly. That's the double edged sword of um that's the double edged sword of social media, man. Right, it is, it really is, you know, because uh, it gives us the opportunity to build our fan base, but it also doesn't really give us the opportunity to uh, put the fan base easier to people's lap so they can just easily see it without having to spend like a whole bunch of money on promotion and just things like that. And then that money should go to our next project where we're just yeah. trying to promote that one story. So it's like kind of like, you know, taking two steps back to make one step forward. That's good when you first start out, but when you're getting in to, you know, publishing more than one story, that's kind of a bad thing. Exactly. So. Okay. So you still didn't answer the other question. Oh, what the second one? The Friday? Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. So let me see. Um, let me try to think of one that I didn't do for a Friday night fight. Give me a second. Uh, you can do um, you can do media too. I don't mind. No, I'll, I'll stick with the comics. I'm just okay, trying to. Okay. Think. I don't want to do one that I already did. That's what I'm trying to think. Uh, gotcha. uh, so let me see. Um, hmm. cause see, my favorite character as when it comes to comic books, one of my favorites that really kind of made me really wanted to read it was Spider Man. Yeah, I like Spider Man. Um, but then when uh. When I found out about Static, I was like, oh, shoot, this dude is cool. You know, 
So in Static and, and Spider-Man, to me, you're kind of like on the same wavelength. The only difference is that one has electric powers and the other one has spider powers because they both were kind of kids that were bullied at school, at school. They both got powers that wasn't like chosen by them or they were born with it. They just mysteriously got it. Um, mm-hmm. And they both also create their own outfits, contrary to you know how Static Shock was because Static Shock is older. I'm sorry. But... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, you know, so um, those two are like ones that I had always really liked, and they did one with that recently. But uh, how do you um, what you think of that one? Did you like it? Of what? Um, the new Static comic? That what you were talking about? Um, no, I was talking about the Static Shock TV show that came out. Oh, oh, oh yeah, the old one. Yeah, it's not it's not at all accurate to the actual comic. Oh, it isn't. <laughs> no, there's no such character as Richie. In the in the comic, because I mean the, the comic static yeah. creates his own outfit, his True. own gadgets and things of this nature. So there's no Richie. That's just you know <laughs> mainstream media, you know, trying to dilute the character to show that mm-hmm. he can create his own. Stuff. But anyway, I'm not gonna that. But uh, so like go back to I'm gonna do something simple. Okay, let's see. Um, let's say Hulk. Ooh versus hmm. no no let's do spawn Ooh, okay you can spice here versus uh ghost rider oh oh that's a good one wait i did that one i think i did that one I don't know, but yeah, you know let's what, that's pretty good. Yeah, because I, I, I've done a few. I've done a few Friday night fights. We need to get back to that. I've been slipping for a long time, but I've been trying to go hard with all the other stories. So I haven't had the time, but uh, yeah, let's go with those two. Um, me right. personally, I feel like Spawn is like a character that's really hard to to really put anyone against because he's so OP. True, you know, like he, mm-hmm. he he's not just like. In the beginning of the, the comic, he's just a regular hell spawn, and then later into the series, not only he becomes the ruler of hell, but he becomes the ruler of heaven. Then he becomes the ruler of both. So <laughs> you know, he's like an OP character. <laughs> so you know, he's a hard one to put against. You know, but uh, I like him going against um, Ghost Rider because Ghost Rider could use his penance there, and uh-huh. he could probably just kill him from all the souls that that Al Simmons has killed, whether, you know, good for good reasons or bad, he'd be fucked. So hmm. okay, that makes I would sense. probably say probably say Ghost Rider, maybe. I don't know. Maybe I, I don't know. Maybe Spawn will win. I'm gonna say Yeah, Spawn. honestly, I don't know either, because Ghost Rider with um with the Daffodils. We're talking about uh Danny Ketch or are we talking about uh Johnny, Johnny Blaze. Blaze? Uh, um, I'm gonna have to go yeah, with that, that also plays a part too. You're right. That also yeah. plays a part too. If I'm not wrong, I think Danny catches the um, the stronger Ghost Rider. Yeah, he is. He is. Johnny is just uh, the long, the, the longest running uh, Ghost Rider. But yeah. So yeah, I mean, I don't know because, like I said, Spawn is so strong, and he's he has so many abilities, and that cape is like basically being like a Green Lantern or something where he can create anything from his mind with it. Yeah. So he has like three different powers, you know, within himself, you know what I'm saying? And he's also a, a person that is really good with, with weapons and he, he's a great martial artist. So <laughs> it's hard to not choose Spawn, you know what I mean? Like, like, honestly, that's a hard one. I can't say much about um, Spawn right now, because literally, hold on. Let me see if I can find it here. Got it. Literally, I just bought um the first volume, so I'm trying oh. to catch up to where everyone else is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got you got ways to go. But yeah, man, I, I love the character. Um, I'm hoping that uh when they do the movie that they actually bring back Michael J. White because Michael J. White, I feel, is just like perfect casting for the character. Oh yeah. He's the right height. He can do martial arts. He's, you know, he does know how to use guns from other movies. 
you know, he has the cool look and voice for him. Like he's just like the perfect character, perfect person, that perfect person for the role. But mm. I heard that um, in the beginning that they was gonna go with Jamie Fox. Uh, why yeah. Jamie Fox and everything? Like I, I love him, <laughs> but he he's good for certain types of movies, you know. Yeah. See, because the thing about that movie that they were going to do, it wasn't really going to be uh, Spawn as the main focus. Uh -oh. There's uh, two other characters that are, like, really um, important characters who are, like, the two detectives. Um, I forget their names right now. It's a fat one and a skinny one, but I can't remember. Oh, I think I, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, and so they were going to be the focus of the story, not Spawn. Spawn was just going to be, like, appearing every now and again. So that's why they were going to just go with Jamie Foxx, but I still feel that they should just let Michael Jai White do his thing, you know, and do a better version of the, the outfit and, and you know, the CGI and all that stuff. Yes. And uh, do it again, because to me, I still like the movie. I mean, a lot of people don't like it and think that it was crap, but <laughs> I mean, I've always been kind of the oddball. I'm still a person that still thinks The Watchmen was a good movie. Wait, people think The Watchmen is a bad movie? Yeah, a lot of people say that that movie is bad. I was like, I no, love it. That movie was great. I'm not a huge like I'm. I'll be the first one to say that I'm not a huge Scott Snyder fan. You know, uh, Zack Snyder, but uh, The Watchmen was good. I like The Watchmen. Three Hundred was okay. I feel like um, you can't watch it over and over and over. I think after a while, you're like. This is kind of whack. Yeah. Um, but, you know, the Watchmen, he did a good job. Justice League, I'm kind of 50 50 with that. Yeah, um, I feel you. Like, the work Man of Steel was, was good, though. I, I thought Man of Steel was good. I felt like there were certain things that I would have changed to make it a little better. But I think Man of Steel was good. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I was going to say with. Um, Justice League. The um they yeah um the Snyder cut was better than um the original film. I'll give him that. Yeah, by far. Mm -hmm. Yes, by far. But I don't know. I still I still think it's like a four to five out of ten for me. The like yeah. the one thing that really like bogged down the film was all the lowest lane scenes. I don't think she needed that much screen time to be honest. Well, you know, do you know? Did you hear about the actual reason? That, like what was going to happen in the actual Justice League 1 and 2? Oh, no. What happened? Well, the reason behind Lois having so many scenes was that she was actually going to be pregnant. And she was going to be pregnant with Superman's baby. But then I heard the real reason was that she was actually going to be pregnant with Bruce Wayne's baby. What? Yeah, that Bruce How Wayne. That? And the story, was, the, all of that was supposed to be changed. But they, they just like didn't do it the way that he okay. wanted to. And so him and him and Lois were supposed to get it on. He was supposed to have his baby. And then he was supposed to protect Lois when um, Doomsday came, but he didn't. Doomsday comes and he goes right after Lois. And that's what spawns all of that crazy shit that happens at the end of the movie of the Justice League. That's why he was like, she was my world and he just let her die. Cause he mm. then turns and joins Dark Side and breaks him, and that's uh, how he becomes the way he is. And okay. then um, Flash ends up going back to the past and telling telling Bruce Wayne that she's the key. So there's a whole bunch of stuff that was supposed oh, to happen. Okay, it all so, makes sense now. Yeah, but I mean, after hearing all of that and like hearing all the details, you know, that was supposed to happen, I was like. Yeah, but it still sounds like crap. Like, <laughs> it doesn't, like, it sounds like, oh, that sounds like a cool idea. But some of the things is like, well, that's kind of stupid. Why would Bruce Wayne sleep with Lois? And uh, you know, especially with that whole kind of like storyline that they were going with, like, there's no interaction with them at any uh, point. Yeah. I was so, gonna say, you know, oh, my bad. But, so, many, uh, so many crazy things that would have added where I just felt like, there's yeah. my 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 main thing that I didn't like was I didn't like Dark Side. No, yeah, Darkseid. I felt no, Dark Side. They made him like a bitch. 
yeah. dark side didn't kill anybody like he just was talking like how you how you go to earth right and get washed up by all of them and didn't kill not one person he didn't like do his omega beam to anybody he just exactly. he got stat like I, have you ever seen dark side My I've never seen Dark Side bleed before. I was like, he's bleeding. I was like, he oh no, this is wrong. Shit, this is wrong. I was done after that one. I was like, ah, this is gonna be a bad movie. I was just watching it after that. Bro. Yeah. So uh, you know, I mean, you know, like his this is a guy that that literally admits to not being a comic book fan. He's like, he admits that he's not a comic book fan, he just likes doing the movies. So he's gonna do his movies the way he wants to do them. And that's probably one of the reasons why Justice League wasn't as good as it should have been. I feel you. A lot of people say, you know, it was rushed. I kind of feel that too. But I think that if it was done right with all of those characters being introduced and having a little sort of origin story and then they coming together to fight, it would have still been a lot better than what we got. True. But because of the fact that, you know, it, he didn't really try to use the source material better than what he could have done. Like there was no purpose for Superman to have the black suit. What was the purpose? He just put it on. Oh yeah. And they didn't explain why he had it on. He just was like, yo, it's my black suit. Check me out. Yeah. He beat up some people. And I was like, well, why? So a lot of people, like I don't know if I went with my girl, and she's not like as known about all of the comics. And she was yeah. asking me, like, why does he have the black suit? And I was like, oh, wait, they're going to tell you. <laughs> and I'm watching the movie and she's like looking at me. Wait for like, it. So why does he have the suit? I'm like, wait, just, just watch. It's going to happen. <laughs> and we're watching. And then it ends. And she's like, we're walking out the movie there. He's like, so what? why does he have the black? And I was like, oh, great. They didn't tell you, right? And that's when I knew. I was like, oh, man, they didn't even tell you. He just throws it on. They didn't even tell you why he has alternate reasons of his suits. They just had different suits. They had the space suit where he goes into space, and then he has the uh, the water suit that he where he goes up when he goes to Atlantis. Sometimes they didn't explain any of that. They just had it there, just just for shits and giggles. And First like, of all, Superman shouldn't he be able to like hold his breath? Yeah, he can, but I think there was there was there was a, a one comic that he had where he actually had a suit when when he went underwater. Um, mm -hmm. Just like he had a suit, we we can go. He has to go into space. Um, okay, I believe that suit was because it had to do with something with him in the red sun to to keep him from the radiation of the red sun. So they did, he made a suit um, where he can go into space and still fight someone. I don't remember, but. Yeah, they had all these different suits, and they never explained why. And he just threw on the black one just just for the hell of it. <laughs> Dude, I was I mean, like, what is this? I was gonna say sometimes Superman has to style on people, bro. Hey, I'm not I'm not mad at you. You know what I mean? The black suit, you know. But I felt like this, right? Okay, if if you're gonna do something, you're gonna come out, you're gonna stunt like that. At least make it like something different. It looked like he just like looked at his suit. <laughs> I was like, yo, I need to switch it up and threw on black paint and just let it run down his whole his whole suit. He didn't have like new armor or a chest plate. It just what was they, black. What they should have done was just bring back the mullet. Cause think about it. He's either dead or he's um hibernating for like months. His right. That's what longer. the suit is supposed to do. You know that that is what the suit is supposed to do when he when he's about to be on his like when he's about to die. That suit is basically like helps him hibernate and gain his strength back. And yeah. then when he goes back into you know the sun radiation, it fully strengthens him. But they didn't they didn't explain none of that. They he just do the shit on, and I was like, well, okay, <laughs> that's another Tuesday. Yeah, you know. Oh shoot! Also, I think I can explain. Why Batman decided to do Lois Lane like that? Yeah, he has a history of doing that, man. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And then also he was so he was going to sacrifice himself um, at the end of the first one. It's wow. a very different story because, like I said, there's a lot of stuff that they that he was going to do originally, which was kind of crazy, but 
it kind of makes sense, but it's like a lot of stuff that goes on. Like it's so much stuff that was supposed to go into the the original movie. <laughs> yeah, man, because yeah, it's so average, it's just it's plain. But yeah, I mean, like when I first heard like all the things that they were gonna throw into the movie, I was like, man, this sounds like a crazy story. That's like a lot of stuff that's going into it, but is it necessary like it's not necessary you know like there's one thing to have a story and, and you're like man i wanted to add this and it's like wow that sounds cool but all of the stuff that he he was talking about that he wanted to add none of it really seemed like it was something that should be put into a justice league movie just True. just so the 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 main focus is that they can all come back together and fight like that's that's kind of crap that's um, like like the his the the idea that he came up with made it seem like there was supposed to be like a justice league three four five because there's so much stuff that was supposed to go on within the the, the one and two that you would have just been like this is a lot <laughs> exactly I just feel like it would have been better if they just did individual movies like how Marvel did it. Because yeah. there's no way that you can have a complete story with five brand new characters that have so much history. It's not like it's the hateful eight, you know? Yeah. You see, I think I think they could have they could have done it the way that they did, just make it more, you know streamline like he tried to put too much into to the story i think the, the main thing that fucked up the whole just league movie is that they made batman old i think that was like the main mistake because batman's not old when they create the just league he's still a young guy and his whole personality and demeanor just didn't really go with the whole idea of what was going on with what the with what they had made the idea was going on with what the idea that he wanted to do, but it never came out that way. So it was kind of already messed up from there because then he didn't have the ability to put out the story that he wanted to do with Batman and how he was supposed to turn and, you know, all this craziness. So I think that's what kind of messed it up as well. But I feel like they could have still you know, kept some of the things that they had and then whatever they, they felt like they didn't know what they were going to do because they, you know, they were so many times, you know, Ben Affleck was like, I'm in and I'm out, I'm in and I'm out, yeah. I'm out and I'm in. So they could have just used Flash to create the Flashpoint. And then they could have kept the Batman, the new guy, Robert Patterson, as the Batman. And then that could have continued on as a Justice League story. Yeah. That would have been a good way to salvage what they had. But now they got two Batmans, actually three Batmans, if you want to count Michael Keaton, because he's back in the Flashpoint movie that they just showed today. True. I wonder so, how they're going to do that. Yeah, so they showed the, the tease trailer today, so he's in that one. And then they got Ben Affleck, who's in Flashpoint 2. And then they got uh, the Batman that's actually coming out, which is like a whole different story with a whole different characters playing these characters so it's this it's just a lost opportunity because me being a huge uh dc fan i look at it like man they could have just introduced so many cool characters another character that really pissed me off now that i think about it is the martian yeah. man hunter oh don't get me started on that dude this dude comes like he's been there since day one <laughs> and he just comes at the end of the movie like hey i'm gonna help now but I'm not gonna help y'all when some real shit happened, but I'm gonna be here. Peace out and leave. I was like, yo, what you, yo, what you, what you, you, you butt up. What are you talking about? Like Superman dies and you just go to Lois and talk to us to just be strong. Like, damn, nah, nah. you was a bitch, man. Come on. Nah, he was in the background eating his popcorn, bro. What? Like, he just sitting there like the Michael Jackson meme. Like, just nah, I ain't going out there. I, I ain't going out there. Y'all see me Nah, I'm good. I'm gonna stay right here. When I mean, Superman was getting his ass whooped by Doomsday, he could have came through and helped. He's just sitting there looking at the screen, telling telling the president that, "Yo, look at this, look at yo, look at this." Not one time he said, "You know what? Maybe I should help." They all doing some good stuff. Maybe I should help them. I could save them. Nope, nope. 
I was like, yo, that's that's dumb. They should have kept that part out. They should have replaced him with John Stewart. That would have been dope. Oh, yeah. Because he could have been like, yo, I just got my ring. I'm here now. I'm going to help y'all. I know I don't know what's going on, but I'm John Stewart. I got my powers. I'm telling you about the Green Lantern Corps. Blah, blah, blah. That would have been cool. But to have this dude that's been there since the first man is still, and he ain't do nothing to help nobody, and then come at the end talking about, yeah, I'm going to help now. I'm a superhero. Call me the Martian Manhunter. Like, ain't nobody asked you what your name is. Nobody cares. Got it. You know what? <laughs> I'd have been so mad if he came at me doing it. Yeah, hello. I want to help you. Like, did you not see us, like, literally about to die trying to fight this one guy? And you talking about you want help now? Get out of here. Who want you? You know what? You were sitting there letting us get jumped. Now we about to jump you. Word, like, he ain't throw some fire with him, so <laughs> get out of my face, bro. Like, you, you're not even trying to help when you're going to come at the end of the, the, end of the whole everything. We done saved the world. You done watched the world be saved twice. Superman was literally about to die in Man of Steel. He blowing up buildings. Not one time did he come through and be like, hey, y'all need to calm down. Calm down. Let me show you around. Let me, you know, you know like. He just was standing there watching everything be destroyed. That's that's terrible. <laughs> that's it's terrible. like uh, that one deadbeat dad that um comes around after you're 18, talking about he did everything for you. Yeah, like yeah, or he or like the son becomes rich and he like, hey man, yeah. how you doing? I see you got the comics, man. You make money off them comics. Let me get some, man. Come on, come on, Aaron. I've been there for you. Come on, I'm your dad. Give me, give me some money, man. Like, God, hey, you ain't help put nothing together. You don't get no money. Get your ass out. Like, I was so mad when I saw that. I was like, this, that's, that really, like, I remember, I remember going to the movie dead. And after that, I was so heated. I saw the movie and I'm like, this, this is kind of, this is kind of bad. This is kind of bad. And I'm sitting there and then the credits about to come up and then he pops up and I'm like, no. I'm like, oh, this now. Nah, I'm ready. I'm I'm done. I'm done. I don't care. Just, just skip the credits. Skip the credits. <laughs> I didn't want to see it anymore. I was, I was so done. It was like, you want to see what is this? Some end credits. I'm like, I don't care. I don't care about the end credits. I don't care about this movie no more. <laughs> That's stupid. My girlfriend was trying. Like, yeah, but the, no, no, no. Don't try to don't try to save that. All right, keep money. Yeah. Have a good one. All right, man. Take it easy. But dude, oh shoot. Honestly, you guys don't have it that bad. Because you you guys have just been doing this. Me as a Marvel fan, I've been doing this since uh, after Phase 2. <laughs> phase 3 just threw everything to the water, man. Ooh, shoot. Like, my, my favorite, uh, one of my favorite heroes is Thor. So, I like the direction that they were taking it with uh, the first movie. They kind of deviated a little bit and made it, like, too boring in the second one. Because they were Focus on like what Malachir, a guy yeah. that nobody really knows. Mm. But they say, "Yo, I don't. We don't know how to make this work. So we're just gonna do what Guardians did. And since that made us a lot of money, we can just take the easy way out." Yeah. And then they butchered his entire character, and it's <laughs> never been the same since. Not even yeah. in the comics. Like what the hell? <laughs> yeah, he, he's he's. I I mean, honestly, a lot of people like that movie. They like the. Um, uh, what, what was it called? I forget what it's called. The the third movie. Oh, oh for Ragnarok. Yeah, yeah, Ragnarok. Ragnarok. yeah, yeah. I, I, I didn't like Ragnarok. I didn't like it. I felt it was too like they, it was too too way too comedic. Like I was just like I can't get into it because every time when it's like supposed to be like a real good scene or something that you could really like, okay, it's funny and you're like, oh, yeah, so it's like a time it. and a place for stuff to be funny, but. It's just way too much of it. That's why I didn't like Shazam. I didn't like Shazam either. Oh, you didn't like Shazam? Nah, I didn't like Shazam. Oh, that's your Shazam was just too too much of it. And I was just like... Uh, I think I just like goofy shit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I do too. I'm all for it. But like, I feel like sometimes it's like a, a good time for it. Like, there's all... Like, for me, funny stuff or... Comedy is all about timing, punchlines. Sure. But if you're like constantly just saying jokes and then there's no real punchline, you're just saying funny stuff. 
Uh, it just kind of is like a long conversation, but you, you, you're like, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Oh, exactly. I, I feel you. It's like the joke when you're trying to make people laugh and it doesn't work, it ends up not being funny. Yeah. Or if it, even if you are funny, but you're like, nobody wants to like have a conversation and all you're doing is telling jokes. That's oh yeah. Because eventually you're just like, yeah, you're funny, but okay, calm down. Like just <laughs> say something normal, like chill. And then come back with a joke. You know, give it a rest. Take it to two and then go back to ten. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> for, for Shazam, I felt like it was always at like an eight and then going to ten. Eight to ten. Eight to ten. And I was just like, eh, this isn't this isn't for me. <laughs> this isn't for me. I'm not feeling it. I don't know. I think they had some serious moments. It was just like 20% of the movie. I don't know. The serious moments were so generic that I didn't even like it. It was I just mean, so like... Eh, eh. I might get hate for this, but I thought Shazam was pretty generic as a character. That's yeah, I mean, like, I think Shazam was... I mean, I, don't, I wouldn't say he's generic. I always kind of liked the idea of, of that kind of concept. I thought that was kind of cool. I didn't have a problem with the way how he acted. You know what I'm saying? I just oh. felt like it was too much of it. Every scene was too much of it. Like, just every now and again, like, try to have this idea where he's trying to figure out these abilities or, you know, something. Like, they just use too many generic tropes within the movie. That made it so like streamlined and not something new. They could have made something like a cool, you know, atmosphere with within two characters trying to understand him being this new superhero, or him being an adult, him trying to still be a normal kid, him having a friend or brother that knew his super his secret identity. All of these yeah. things, but they they just made it too too comic. To me, it's like uh, Key and Peel. Oh yeah, you know, like Key and Peele, they're funny, but then like they take the joke and then they stretch it and then it's not funny anymore. Exactly. Then you're just like, oh, then they ruined it. And then you're just like, yo, I want, like, I want to watch the um, Chappelle show, <laughs> right? <laughs> yo, dude, I can watch Dave Chappelle specials all day. Yeah, man, they they don't get old. They don't get old. And you know, like the good, see, it's like it's like a joke punchline, joke punchline. Joke punchline with them. This is like a joke, and they stretch it, and then they hit the punchline, and you're like, by that time, you're like already done with it because yeah. they're taking too long to, to like get to the next joke. It's just one big joke. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Did you like the the uh, the new Dave Chappelle special? Oh, dude, I loved it. <laughs> you already know I loved it, man. Dude, everything that he was saying, it, it makes sense, and I don't understand why people were mad at it. Um, well, um misunderstanding his point. Right. I think yeah. I think you know, it's what a lot of comedians have been talking about for a long time is that there there's like this whole PC world that doesn't allow you to take a joke and, and make it for what it is. You know, it's it's a joke. Exactly. It's okay. It's not you're not supposed to take it seriously. It's like, how can people get mad at, at all these comedians saying these funny things, but no one has said anything to South Park? Yes. South Park has been around since I think 1998. I think. I don't know. People and have nobody it. has come up to these guys and go, "How could you do this? This is offensive. I don't like this." Duh, duh, duh. No one says anything about that. No one tries to get them canceled or anything. No, I think they did get canceled once. No, nah, they, they they've been going oh, on. Really? The only thing that they they that happened to them was that they were doing this one uh sketch or thing or episode yeah. with uh um they were trying to do uh an episode where they actually showed the god the prophet Muhammad. And oh yeah, they <laughs> the people uh, uh Muslims was like, yo, if you do this, we'll kill you. And so they they yeah. cut that scene out. They just like blurred it or whatever. So they so they didn't have to get any trouble. But they never been canceled. They've had so much offensive stuff on there. No one batted an eye because it's, they just be like, oh, that's just South Park. But a comedian yeah. says or does the same thing, they lose their minds. 
So honestly, I think it's because South Park's more like I I don't want to use the word brainless. It's like you you can turn your brain off and just enjoy how good it is, like because it's like a cartoon, you know. Yeah, animated well, makes you kind of feel like it's for kids or something, but it's really exactly. not. South Park mm-hmm. is far from kids, but I don't I don't I don't think it's it's fair that you know comedians now have to like watch what they say and things and especially here's the thing about the Dave Chappelle one the Dave Chappelle one especially the last one he explains why he was using these jokes and how what he was comparing it to when you listen to what he's comparing it to it makes sense it's like yo this is why I'm saying it. I'm not saying it just to make fun of transgender people. I'm saying it as it compared to us. Like, look what they're doing. Like, and no one catches that. Cause no, I think, I don't know. I don't want to go too deep and then, you know, you end up having to cancel your, your show. So nah, nah, <laughs> yeah, nah, episode nah. one. So we're gonna leave that alone. That's it's a high good. topic good. right now. You know, that's that's talking about that is worse than talking about like, you know, uh religion or Politics right, right now, so like, let's leave that one alone. Yeah, the, the only thing I'm gonna say, and then we're gonna close off on that one, is that there's I think there's like two people um in society. There's people that try to understand people's points, and there's people that also try to do that, but they have a tendency to think with their emotions instead of with um, you know, trying to empathize with um what's going on. Right. Yeah. Trying to still put their two cents in it. Yeah, it's like the assassins and the templars, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, man. Like I said, you know, I just think that's like a. It's, I. I just think that's just how it's gonna be, though. Is because so many people are so taken back from it, and they refuse to see it from another point of view. They just call out whatever. Exactly. culture is just it's, it's like it's here <laughs> it's here it's not going anywhere as soon as you say something they're gonna probably try to cancel us right now they're gonna probably try mm-hmm. to cancel me from doing my indiegogo this week no I, i'm already used to it because literally uh th- this was like as soon as i finished the campaign i i announced that um i was gonna do a makeup um campaign for the first Indiegogo campaign I, la- I launched. Because back then I didn't know what I was doing. It was kind of trash. I'm not gonna lie, really, really trash. So I just wanted to use all, um, take all the mistakes I um, made and make them better so that the people that actually wanted to back my book on there could, um, you know, have something. And then yeah. this one dude comes out of nowhere saying like, oh, you're doing it on Indiegogo? Well, I wish I knew that before I bought the book. And when I was trying to understand his point, he he pretty much didn't tell me what the problem was. But you you can see that he he thinks that like Indiegogo is like this uh, Nazi terrorist group or whatever, like bigoted people. What? <laughs> yeah, it's like there's this whole thing going on. It's like this group called Comics Gate, and then you got the people that don't like them. The people that you um uh, are Comics Gate use um Indiegogo a lot. And yeah, I know of them very well, but I mean, okay. I, yeah, you can't. But that's like you, you, you're, you can't base yeah. what the comic base, you know, comic gates have, and you can't base them off of, of uh, any type of association that they're dealing with. Because first of all, any any gogo is open to anybody. Exactly. It's it's open to you. It's open to me. The comic gate people. People, you know, that don't even have comics. People that are selling whatever, you know. They just, hey, I got a, a, a you know, a new a back scratcher, electric back scratcher that exactly. also gives yeah. you a massage. You know, you put it on any go go. Same thing with Kickstarter. You know what I mean? So I, I feel that uh, some, you know, that's the thing. You know, I know you're still kind of somewhat new, but you've been around for a while. So yeah, but you know. Some of those comments like that, you just can't you can't dive into it. I try. I I've learned over the years that some people just are they create profiles just so they can mess with the other person. Like they don't have no intentions of trying to hear you or hear your point of view or whatever. They will just fight with you 
to the I remember at one time I had I don't even remember what the post was. I posted something and this one person clapped back and said some whole bunch of negative stuff. I said maybe one, two posts, and then this other guy went in with them and they were going back and forth. I think I did the post at like four o'clock in the afternoon. I woke up the next day, they were still going at it back and forth. Dang. I was just like, dude. Just let it just just let him win. He was like, no, I'm not gonna let him win because then if I let him win, then he'll keep going on believing this. And he's wrong. And I was like, dude, oh I'm God. never gonna win. Just just exactly. You know, so you sometimes you just gotta be like, eh, nah, it's not more of the time. It's not if it doesn't make sense to you in your head, then I don't even say it anymore. I just I just <laughs> I I'll be right, ready to hit sin, ready to hit sin. And I'd be like, you know what? This is gonna cause me way too much time in my life. I'm just gonna play my game. Screw that. I exactly. Going. I ain't going. You know, uh, so, so many better things I could be doing right now. Lord, don't even, don't even dive into the stupidity, man. That's what they want. They just want you to dive into it too. So yeah, yeah, definitely, you should definitely do it. Like we were talking about before, you know, there is a a, a, a medium for both, and exactly. there's fans for both. You should definitely do it. You know, it's a um, it's a great way for you to still expand your world and your company. Hmm. Right, he's right. You know, um, so you should definitely, you should definitely do it. Exactly. Like you know, one you, don't, you don't maybe have to put as much as you had before in the last uh, Kickstarter award. That's but that, again, that's truly up to you. Yeah. You can do whatever you want. You know, exactly. it's 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 up to you. You're still a new new person into it, and you know whatever helps you get more funds or more people to look at your stuff. Why? Where's the bad in that? <laughs> you know, yeah. there's no bad in that. Like, people so are gonna good. see it. You're gonna give them the rewards by they were purchasing your perch, your perks. Everybody's happy. No one's gonna be like, "Well, I didn't." didn't. No. So, did, did you get this, your you know, you know, it's it's easier for you because you haven't been able yeah. to go to convention. So this is that's your convention as well. It helps you learn how to be better at convention, you know, because you gotta create a pitch, you gotta create videos, you gotta create anticipation. So when people come to your 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 table at convention, you already have a pitch and you already know what to say. So it's a great lesson learned and it's something that us as creators we really need both. Not just one, but both. The more we have, the more opportunities for everybody to um, continue to use crowdfunding and get better at it. Because there's so many people out there that know about it, but don't know what how to go about things. And then they just put one out and they just put $3,000 or $33,000. Oh, yeah. They don't even know like anything or, don't, or even have a little bit of a fan base. You know what I mean? Hey, it's a lesson learned though, you know. I, know. I did that too. When I did when I had my first my first my very very first Kickstarter, I did both uh Nightfall and Salvation. Oh yeah. Um, I didn't know I didn't have any I didn't have a fan base. I didn't put a high goal. I just didn't have a fan base. No one knew who my what my stories were about. My Kickstarter wasn't it wasn't nowhere near as good as it is now. You know, exactly. it was really rushed. I did it at like the last minute. So I didn't have any time to do anything. I was still adding stuff as the Kickstarter was going. It was terrible. But you learn from it. You know what I mean? And you get better. And then when you put out your next project, you hopefully can take all of those things that you learn and you go into the next Kickstarter and hopefully it all works to your benefit. And, you know, I've seen so many people out there that have that same struggle. I've seen people out there that, you know, seen others make those mistakes and go, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to learn and do mine and I'm going to come out with it and they're successful too. So it's all, I mean, like, you know, this whole thing is all about learning. You know, as a publisher, it's all about learning or trader just in general, you know? Yeah. So don't listen I mean, to me. Yeah, like and sometimes those mistakes can turn into like something good you know yeah, like, I mean, it's all you know it's always going to turn for something good if you learn something from your mistakes you know exactly. what i mean opposed to you just going oh man i messed up next time i'll be better 
but not figure out the reasons why you messed up. Just understanding that you did, that's not going to get you anywhere. It's yeah. always better for you to sort of realize your mistakes and, and go, okay, I messed up because I did this and this and this. Now I got to do this and this and this to make sure it's better. And then when you do it, you'll see that results. It's the same thing about, you know, putting out a comic, you know, you, you got to put some necessarily adjustments to your story. You know, your first draft is not going to be your, your the one that you finish the yeah, comic. Man. I changed my story so many times because I wanted it to really be something good. I wanted it to be something that people can enjoy. So I changed it. I changed the covers. I changed some of the artwork. You know, I went back and really did some improvements. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. that's how it should be. Sometimes you can put it out or sometimes you can just really wait on it and sit on it and, and get better at it that way. But either way, the results are still going to be in your favor. Hmm. So yeah, I, I feel that, man. Yeah, man. I think uh, I think that's that's important to because, like I said, Nightfall story originally, like the very original one, was supposed to be a lot darker. It wasn't for kids, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it was it was a uh, supposed to be like a real real darker story, um, you know. But I, I you know I, I decided I wanted to make a story since it was gonna be our our first story or our first two stories that it should be something that's not going to limit any type of fan base. You know, kids is a huge part of comic fan base. Is that you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So if you're making a story and you want this story to be like something that's going to, uh, you're going to take into conventions and, and things like that, you can't take an adult theme comic to a convention and expect kids to buy it. They're not going to yeah. buy it. Especially with their with their parents, I can't tell you how many times kids, uh, a parent has come up to me and go, they'll hold my comic up and go, "Is this for kids?" And I go, "Yeah, this is for kids." You know, it has like a a little small little scene, but it's no nudity. It's just like a little small something that you would see in a, in a in a Marvel movie. And they go, oh, "Okay," and they purchase it. Yeah. But if I had the original version, I would go, "No, you can't." Right, like don't do <laughs> not that. Get it. <laughs> no, <laughs> you can read it, but they can't. You know what I mean? And then yeah. I would lose. I would lose, say, ten dollars just from that. You know what I mean? And that, that's not really? something that you want. You want to try to make as much as possible when you go to a convention. So exactly. Like for me, I've always wanted to be like. It, it's weird for me because my story it's kind of bridges <laughs> between the lines. I wanted it to be like um, a homage to like the old. 80s and like 90s horror so it has some um like risque scenes some like blood gore well not not really gore but blood though i see yeah, yeah. so it's like kids back then watch that stuff all the time mm -hmm. so it's hard to judge whether or not it'll be appropriate for kids nowadays you know i don't know i think i think uh my 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 way of seeing things like where I wouldn't really give it to kids because even even today you know kids kids are open to so many different things a lot more than what we were when we were younger because they got the internet oh you know, <laughs> you know, yeah so, and then they got video games that you know have all these things in it so easy access to to play these things but True. I would say blood is not a big deal I would say what's being said like the dialogue that could be uh themed as adult themed i think uh you know gore but depending on how detailed it is oh true you know what i mean because you can have gore but you can have like you know like just like a whole hole and then you can see like the insides of the hole or something uh -huh. you know what i mean oh, yeah. or someone's brain that's something you see on, on TV and kids probably watch it too. So you can probably get away with that. But I feel like dialogue or sex in the, the comic, that's something, or nudity just as a whole, that's something that, you know, I wouldn't really okay. care. That makes sense. Yeah. But blood, nah. there's blood in my story. <laughs> I mean, literally, there's, there's someone that being 
That's it. You can't. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting late. It's getting late. What? <laughs> but it's people getting decapitated. You know what I mean? And, and issue two. So you, you know, but that's that's something. The level of it, the way how it's looked. You know, this it's not like veins popping out and blood everywhere. So it's not that graphic. But at the same time, these things are being seen in regular, regular Marvel movies. Yeah. So it's all about the way how it's being portrayed, opposed to it to being like the level of detail that it has. You know okay. So hmm. I didn't get my, I didn't get to uh, get your comment, but I've seen a lot of, of the pages I've seen from the first Indiegogo that you did. I think I backed that one way back when, but I didn't have it. No, I didn't know I didn't back it. Um, yeah. But I did see it though. I haven't ch- I haven't had a chance to back anybody stuff actually. No, I, I feel that man. Because I, I like I, I've been trying to do my own Kickstarter rewards. I still have to finish the last bit of my Kickstarter rewards. <clears throat> so I've been just putting all my money into that and and um, booking some more uh, cons. But I definitely need to get back to that. My old Kickstarter, I uh, was over a hundred or close to it, back in. So okay, <clears throat> I remember I backed the um, Indiegogo one. You backed what? The Indiegogo campaign for um, Nightfall and Salvation. I didn't have. Oh, you mean the uh, the Kickstarter? Oh, I think it was. Yeah, yeah I, I think yeah, it was a Kickstarter. Yeah. I didn't do it. Uh, any, this is actually gonna be my first Indiegogo uh, okay. campaign. Yeah, but yeah, see you starting um, off strong. Huh? You're gonna be starting off strong. Yeah, hopefully, 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 you know, hopefully, uh, this is uh, the first one, and you know, it's gonna make me look like I'm such a professional because <laughs> you know we have a successful uh, Kickstarter. I mean, Indiegogo, but you know, who knows? We'll see. Only okay. time will tell. Um, but I definitely hope that it it, it is because, you know, the more people that see it, the better and recognizable it be, you know, not everybody that has a, um, company has people backing them or sponsored. Like I know some companies that are sponsored, um, by like popular people in the world of entertainment. And so they can put out their comic and they'll automatically get like a hundred followers just <laughs> in that one day, you know what I mean? Dude, so, crazy. You know, it, 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 it's all about who you know sometimes. Definitely. So I, I don't know anybody, so I'm doing <laughs> the best way I can, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> You're still doing all right, man. You're building that stuff up. Yeah, man, okay. you know, it just takes time, and, you know, you'll get there, too. You're, you're doing well now. It seems like you're making the right decisions, and, uh, yeah. All right. So, it's um, it's almost time for us to go. Um, the only thing that I'm going to say is where, where do you see yourself going in the future? And, like, as for me, I plan on doing – um. I want to make it to where I can have an animated show for at least like two to three um series and maybe a toy line, but that's like way down the road. Mm-hmm. And where um where can we find your stuff? Okay, so uh, I'll do the second one because the second one is a lot easier to answer. Exactly. You can find all of our stuff at our website, Animation Comics ENT dot com. Um, you can also find our Indiegogo at um, Nightfall 1 and 2, um, which will be available and going live this week, Monday or Tuesday for sure. Um, where do I see myself in the next couple of years? For me, I like I said, uh, the company is called Animation and Comics Entertainment, and for the next couple of years, that is what um, I'm striving to uh, represent in all facets. Uh, we're already working on uh, our animation series. Um, I have my girlfriend who is actually a, a, a director and she she's also a photographer as well. And she, we've been talking about possibly making a, a movie 
from one of our stories. If uh, not one of our stories, it's something that we can do together because um, it's a great way for her to get her name out there and to help with my creativity so I can sleep at peace. Um, <laughs> So that's that's one thing that I definitely want to do. Uh, music is also very close to my heart. So um, musically, that's something that I've been working on a lot more recently because uh, I got hurt my arm. So I, I've been having some time off of work. So I've been having even more time to 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 do all of the things that I've always wanted to do. So I've been working more on my writing for songs and working on my guitar which is behind me okay um, and my vocals as well so those things i definitely want to uh try to do in the next couple of years as well so just you know i just really really want to be known for like a a great source of everything <laughs> you know but i don't want to be just, i don't want it to just be with just my face or my brothers i want to start to really um, have people underneath the company, you know what I mean? I want to have others, people's stories being told in whatever facet, whether it be animated or comics or even having their own song and songs. So those are the things that I definitely um, see myself doing in the next couple of years, working on animation, comics, and entertainment. Okay, that is a great Great way to close things out, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, first off, I like I appreciate you stopping by, um, coming on the show. You mm -hmm. real big help, real interesting conversation. Yeah, man. I appreciate you, man. It, it was uh, it was nice to have you have me on. Or Whatever it was nice, it was nice to be on. I, you know, it was nice to chop it up with you. Like I said, you know, uh, I wish you all the best with your your comic, man. And I'm glad to see that you uh, you had a successful Kickstarter, and I hope that when you do your indie go go, I hope it's successful as well. And yo, know, just keep trying along, man. You, you all right, man. All right, man. Um, as for me, um, you can find me on here through the ages. You can also find me on my um my comic store page, um, wolfsbanecomics.com after the Indiegogo um for the issue one, it will be releasing on our store. And in the future, we will be having um we have um a second issue lined up for um 2022, as well as a brand new series that I hope to uncover sometime soon. As always, people, um Thanks for stopping in. Have a beautiful day, night, morning, wherever you are, and well. Wow.